This video is about how to take your knowledge of creating keyframes and turn that into being able to use graphs, loops and other features DaVinci Resolve offers to improve your keyframing skills. So here's the scenario I'll be working with. In DaVinci Resolve's Fusion tab, I have a rectangle and a background, with that rectangle having some shadow and glow apply. I've also added four keyframes, two of them move the rectangle from left to right, and the other two rotate it as it goes. If you wouldn't be sure how to get this far from a keyframing perspective, then watch my video on the basics of keyframing first. Now that we've got all that out of the way, the first thing to do when using more advanced keyframing techniques is to set up your windows in Fusion. The layout I'm going to show is dual screen, however all these features are accessible just slightly more awkwardly on a single monitor setup. Once you're in the Fusion tab, first enable dual screen mode in the workspace dual screen on menu. First, let's move this keyframes window down, revealing the splines window behind it. Going for about a one third, two third split. You can also disable the metadata window as you most likely won't be needing this. As you saw before, this is the keyframe window, also available on the single screen setups here. For context, our nodes are shown as layers here in their own sort of timeline. Now to make this clearer, start by pressing this button here, which sets the scale of this timeline like our area to fit our content perfectly. My keyframes are in the S rectangle one node, so I'm going to press this drop down to expand its keyframes. From here, I can see my two keyframed values, the X or horizontal movement and the angle of the shape as their own tracks. I can then move and control these values through two main methods. The first is by selecting the track area and dragging, moving all the keyframes of that value at once. You can also select multiple tracks with shift, moving all those values keyframes at once. Up next, you can after selecting away, press on the keyframes individually to select them, then moving them. Once again, you can hold shift to select multiple individual keyframes or drag a selection box over them to then select them as a group in bulk. Ultimately, this keyframes window allows you to move your keyframe timing easily, dragging them around and making adjustments much, much easier. Lastly, we have the all important splines window. First thing to do in this window is to look to the left. There is a list of keyframed values in the node tree and here we can show or hide them in our spline window. Next to each value is a tri-state button. This means it cycles between showing the keyframes of that value, showing them but making them greyed out, and then not showing them at all. Now I'll press the fit keyframes to window button, same as in the keyframes tab, to put things into view. Zooming out a bit with control plus scroll to make things easier to edit. If I select one of these keyframes, you'll see that there is now an extra dot on the line. This isn't another keyframe, but instead a handlebar. By dragging this, I can control how the square in my viewer moves between these keyframes. A straight line through means a consistent speed and instant start and stop. Whereas if I start to smooth this, then so will the rectangle's movement, easing its movement between the keyframes. However, whilst moving the handlebars on the keyframes can be useful for creating the exact feeling and look you want, often you are just aiming for that smoother feel. So using this smooth button down here does exactly that. Select the keyframes you want to apply this to by dragging over them or using Ctrl A to select all, then press this button. Along this base toolbar we have other options, like making things straight again and having instantaneous motions. When using this automatic smoother button, you'll have seen that in its effort to make things smoother, it's actually made my rectangle move further than I wanted it to. To fix this, you may find that you sometimes need to select the keyframes in groups before applying this effect. In this instance, I will need to select the left and the right half separately to ensure nothing goes outside the range of my keyframes. As you can see, I have two sections of my keyframes, the rectangle moving from left to right and the rectangle moving from right to left, so back again. However, if I wanted this to be an infinite loop, like bouncing back and forwards here, I can come back to the toolbar. The two most useful options here are the standard loop, which repeats my keyframes infinitely. And then if I delete this half of my keyframes, the ping pong loop, which repeats your keyframes, but bouncing them back and forth. There are quite a few useful other options on this toolbar, like flipping your keyframes. If you select this option here, you can drag a transform box over your graph and stretch things however you want. If you select the keyframes you want before you press it, it will create a selection including only those keyframes. Whilst this can be a fantastic way to adjust the pace of your animations, be careful as this can place keyframes between the frames in your clip, making them uneditable and just awkward to deal with. Thanks for watching this far. If you found this useful, then check out my video on instances, which allows you to clone nodes, having all keyframes and everything in sync. I think it could be a really useful follow on from this. 
Now that you all know this, share your thoughts about keyframing and DaVinci Resolve's fusion in the comments. Do you think it competes with After Effects?